Hello everyone, Hyper here, and by popular demand, today's video is the Feral Druid preview in the Shadowlands beta. This spec did not get a huge overhaul like some of the other ones, however, they made some quality of life improvements and some changes, most notably to our primary cooldown, Berserk, um, and some of the talents to make it a little bit nicer and smoother to play. This spec still has a few issues with it that I will cover later in the video, but I will try to talk about all the class changes, talents, um, covenants, conduits, and legendaries. Before we get started with today's video, a quick word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. If you like turn-based RPG games with ever-increasing difficulty, tons of character and customization options, along with fun and rewarding gameplay, you will like Raid Shadow Legends. This game has every type of content that you might be interested in, from campaign mode to dungeons, faction battles, PvP, and more. My favorite thing about Raid is how you rely on each type of content to progress through the game. If you want to beat the campaign on its hardest difficulty, you will have to also farm dungeons for some better artifacts. Putting together a strong team of champions that complement each other and synergize well makes defeating difficult dungeon bosses or campaign bosses that much more satisfying. If you download Raid Shadow Legends this month, you will get to experience the most recent update where they rebalanced a bunch of champions, making Arena even more competitive, as well as adding the new Forge system to the game, allowing you to craft new artifacts, which will give you an edge in dungeons and in PvP. Make sure to use the link in the description box of this video if you want to receive a bunch of free stuff whenever you install Raid. You will get a bunch of cool shiny things such as gems, silver, mystery shards, and even a new champion. To claim this promotion within the next 30 days, simply open up your inbox and all of your loot will be waiting there for you. So first let's look at the baseline abilities that got changed or added. First of all, Berserk and Incarn are off the global cooldown, which is a nice quality of life change. Also Berserk was changed. Um, so now it causes your Rake and Shred to deal damage as though you were stealthed and giving your finishing moves 20% chance per combo point to refund two combo points. So previously, a huge complaint about Feral Druid was the lack of offensive cooldowns. Berserk previously was essentially just Tiger's Fury on a three minute cooldown, making it significantly worse. So with this rework, it actually feels a little bit more powerful the downside is that it is still a 3 minute cooldown, which mostly for raiding tends to not be all that great. Um, there usually are raid bosses that have weird kill times, and 3 minute cooldowns can be a little bit trickier to use than 2 minute cooldowns, but that's something that the class will just have to live with. Then our defensive toolkit got slightly reworked. So Iron Fur got added as a baseline ability. If you shift into bear form, you can use it. Um, I don't think it's going to see much use in PV, but maybe in arenas, uh, it might be an additional little defensive utility that Feral Druid has. Also, another big change is that Bark Skin is now in our baseline kit. One minute cooldown works the same way as it did for other specs previously. With the addition of Bark Skin, Survival Instincts was changed. It is now a three minute cooldown. Um, and it only has a single charge. So in BFA, this was a two minute recharge with two charges. In most situations, I think the current kit in Shadowlands is actually stronger defensive wise because you can survive those huge hits in raid by overlapping survival instincts and bark skin. Um, and then every smaller hit, you can just survive with bark skin. Whereas previously, all you had was survival instincts pretty much. So you either survive with it or not. Next for the talents. So Sabertooth was nerfed to only extend your rip by one second per combo point instead of four. Um, Sabertooth was such an over dominant talent that it just needed to be toned down a little bit um, to bring it kind of in line with the other ones in this row. Then in the level 30 row, each of the affinity talents got an extra ability that you gain whenever you spec into them. So if you spec into Balance Affinity, you get Typhoon. If you spec into Guardian, and then you get Incapacitating Roar. And if you spec into Resto, then you get Ursal's Vortex. So that's just an extra addition, making your choice between the three affinities a little bit more impactful, and also providing a little extra utility depending on what you choose. 
So in the level 35 row with Typhoon being added to the Balance Affinity, Heart of the Wild is a new talent. It essentially empowers your abilities that you gain from the Affinity talents for a short duration and it is a 5 minute cooldown. So in general I don't think this will see too much use, however there is potential for like Balance Affinity abilities to be strong in combination with Heart of the Wild. Or maybe Heart of the Wild in combination with like Resto Affinity might provide you with some nice throughput in Arena, um, but that's yet to be seen. Then in the level 45 row, Brutal Slash has been capped at 5 targets. Um, however, Primal Wrath dodged this nerf um, and is still uncapped, will apply rip to all targets nearby. Then in the level 50 row, we had a significant change to Blood Talents that got essentially completely reworked. The new Blood Talent is still a passive. When you use three different combo point generating abilities within four seconds of each other, the damage of your next two rips or ferocious bites is increased by 30%. So this essentially just encourages you to pool energy um, to the point where you have enough to use three different abilities back to back to proc Blood Talents. So overall, it makes your gameplay a little bit different by encouraging you to pool instead of just build and spend like you would normally. Um, but I think this is a very nice change to the talent compared to what it was previously. Next up, the legendaries. So Feral Druid has a few legendaries that are quite powerful. First up, we have Cat Eye Curio. Clear cast abilities generate 25% of their energy cost and your maximum energy is increased by 60. So taking this legendary in combination with Moment of Clarity makes it so you have 190 energy. This is really strong in Mythic Plus because it allows you to talent Sabertooth instead of relying on the Tiger's Fury resets that you would get from Predator. So you gain more priority damage and it's also a really strong talent for just pure single target in general. Next we have Circle of Life and Death. Your damage over time effects deal their damage 25% less time and your healing over time effects in 15% less time. So overall, this just makes your bleeds tick faster. Um, since a lot of our damage does come from having rip on your target, and we need to keep our other two bleeds up anyway, uh, this just makes it so on large AoE pools specifically, where you can take Primal Wrath and you can apply rip to all nearby targets, um, this legendary provides a pretty significant increase in damage. Another legendary that I wish was buffed a little bit um, is Frenzy Band. Combo point generating abilities reduce the cooldown of Berserk by 0.2 seconds. During Berserk, they cause the target to bleed for an additional 50% of their damage over 8 seconds. So I don't mind the bleed um, buff that's alright, but I wish they buffed was the amount of CDR you get. If you could get your Berserk cooldown down to like a 2 minute uh, with this legendary, it would make it significantly more powerful. Because like I said, 3 minute cooldowns can be pretty awkward to use in raiding. Um, so a CDR legendary could be strong, but it needs to provide enough CDR to actually make an impact. Alright, next up for Covenants. For Kyrian, we have Kindred Spirit. There's a 2.4 second cast. Form a bond with an ally every 1 minute. You may empower the bond for 10 seconds, granting you an effect based on your partner's role, and granting them an effect based on your role. Um, energize your bonded partner, granting them 30% of your damage as additional arcane damage, healing, or absorption. So this is essentially just a very boring stat boost that every minute you can cast on another DPS. Um, in general, I think this is probably the most underwhelming design out of the four abilities that we have. I don't think it's going to see too much use um, unless the stat boost is significant enough. And even in that case, I hope it doesn't because it's just so boring. Then for Ventir, we have Ravenous Frenzy. It's a 3 minute cooldown, which lines up with Berserk. For 20 seconds, Druid spells you cast increase your damage, healing, and haste by 2% stacking. If you spend 1.5 seconds idle, the Frenzy overcomes you consuming 3% of your health per stack, stunning you for 1 second and ending this effect. So this is an offensive DPS ability that lines up with Berserk perfectly. 
and it just empowers your cooldowns which is something that druid was really lacking so every time you have frenzy and berserk together it actually feels like you're doing damage um which i'm very glad to see return to the spec so the downside of it is that you have to constantly keep moving um they did make a quality of life change to the ability if your heart cc'd it doesn't count as idle time um however if you're just stopped and you're not moving around like a demon hunter, then um, this debuff will fall off. So hopefully in raiding, it's not going to end up putting you in situations where you need to stand still um, while you have this ability up. But then again, it only lasts for 20 seconds. So typically you can't find a 20 second window where you can AD AD around um, while you do your DPS. Now for Necrolord, we have Adaptive Swarm. It is a 25 second cooldown. Command a swarm that heals or deals shadow damage over 12 seconds to a target and increases the effectiveness of your periodic effects on them by 20%. Upon expiration, jump to a target within 25 yards, alternating between friends and foe up to three times. So this design, um, I understand why they did it this way. It's supposed to be the hybrid ability, but typically hybrid abilities that are both are good in both um dealing damage and healing are mediocre in both of those areas because you can't have an ability that does really good damage and really good healing depending on which um of those states it's in depending on who the dot is on so overall a little underwhelming um but it is a cool design and then for night fae we have convoke the spirits it is a two minute cooldown that is channeled Call upon the Night Fae for an eruption of energy channeling a rapid flurry of 12 druid spells and abilities over 4 seconds. You will cast Ferocious Bite, Shred, Tiger's Fury, Moonfire, Wrath, Regrowth, Rejuve, Rake, and Thrash on appropriate nearby targets, favoring whatever form you're in. So if you're in cat form, you will favor cat form abilities. So this one was initially the best um, covenant you could go because it was just that powerful. Then it got reworked. Now it is still decent. Um, it is a cool ability, both visually and the idea of it. However, whenever you cast 12 random abilities, there is that little keyword, random. Um, sometimes you will roll the dice high and you will get really good abilities cast. Other times you will roll the dice low and the damage from your two minute covenant ability will be very underwhelming. So, again, really cool design, but in practice it falls a little short of the idea of the ability. Next for Conduits, we have uh, Carnivorous Instinct. Tiger's Fury damage bonus is increased by 3%. Uh, it's just a little damage boost to Tiger's Fury. Especially in combination with Predator, it becomes pretty strong. Uh, sudden Ambush. Finishing moves have 3% chance per combo point spent to make your next rake. Or shred deal damage as though you were stealthed. Uh, a proc based conduit overall it won't change your gameplay too much. Um, it's just going to be important to keep track of if you do proc it so that you don't override like a rake that is empowered. Then we have uh, incessant hunter rip damage has 10% chance to grant 3 energy. So on single target, not that powerful. However, on AoE, where you take Primal Wrath, you will have a bunch of rips out, um, which means that you will be getting quite a bit of energy back. And then lastly, we have Taste for Blood. Ferocious Bite deals 3% increased damage for each of your bleeds on the target. So this conduit is especially strong in combination with Sabertooth, because when playing Sabertooth, you tend to fill your rotation with a lot more ferocious bites than you did when you don't play it. Overall, these conduits seem all right to me. Um, I'm not exactly a feral druid expert, but it seems to me like some of them provide a little bit of proc um, and they provide situational extra damage. So it's nice to see those types of designs instead of just having like a flat percent increase to one of our core abilities. All right, so next, how does Feral Druid actually play? Luckily, I think a lot of Feral Druids are happy about actually having offensive cooldowns. When you take the Venthyr ability and you combine that with Berserk, 
you actually have an offensive cooldown and it's good for both single target and mythic plus and during your cooldowns you feel like you're actually doing damage however on the other hand outside of your cooldowns feral druid is extremely underwhelming currently and this could be just because of tuning I played it a little bit and the rotation felt smooth. Um, I didn't feel extremely energy starved in most situations where typically at the beginning of an expansion, Feral Druids are a little bit struggling uh, to keep up with energy and keep their bleeds on, on all the targets that they need to. So that was nice to see. We do have some good options to mitigate the early expansion energy starved that we have because of the lack of stats. Um, so while it did play smooth, I hope that Blizzard takes a look at it in the tuning department and just move around our damage a little bit to actually make it feel like you're contributing even outside of your cooldowns. But other than that, Feral Druid still plays very similar to how it did before. You just want to maintain your three different bleeds on the target. Um, and outside of that, any extra combo points that you generate just go into Ferocious Bites. It's also nice to see some of the talents reworked, and I really hope that Blood Talents ends up seeing some play in combination with some Legendaries and some of our Conduits, just because it is a cool design and it just encourages that cooling gameplay that Feral Druid had at some points in the past, and also similar to how Assassination Rogue played, uh, where you want to pull your energy for those Toxic Blade windows, I think since Feral Druid is essentially um, very similar in playstyle to Assassination Rogue, I think they're trying to draw parallels between the two as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Huge shout out to Hippo for providing the footage that you were watching in the background while I was talking, because I am not good at playing Feral Druid, but he is, so hopefully you saw some glimpses of what Feral Druid is capable of. But again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.